Destruction of the Amazon rainforest is accelerating, with recent statistics showing 870 square miles was lost in July alone, nearly triple that of the same period last year. And the fires currently burning in Brazil are only part of the story. In Peru, where some 300,000 square miles of forest exist, illegal gold mining has caused devastation of its own. But as NewsHour Weekend special correspondent Leo Schwartz and New York University's Global Beat program report, there's one region where Peru is having some success against the trend. In the heart of the Peruvian Amazon lies a man-made desert. It was once pristine rainforest, but a decade of illegal gold mining has transformed it into a wasteland. Peru is the seventh largest gold producer in the world. The U.S. imports around $2 billion worth a year despite the fact that an estimated 20% of it is illegally mined in places like the Madre de Dios region. It's a sparsely inhabited jungle the size of Indiana, along Peru's borders with Bolivia and Brazil. Gold extraction isn't illegal everywhere in Madre de Dios, but is never allowed inside national reserves or the buffer zones around them. Government officials estimate that as many as 40,000 illegal miners have occupied these areas, clearing trees, digging pits, and infusing the ground with mercury. The toxic chemical draws the precious gold out of the sand and dirt, but is then left behind, poisoning the landscape. But at least some of those miners are now on the run. In February, the Peruvian government declared a state of emergency in Madre de Dios and sent in 1,800 army troops and police. Today, there are seven fixed bases and a network of field sites. It's called Operation Mercury. Jorge Cotito is a colonel with the Peruvian National Police. The miners had formed what we could call a paramilitary base, and nobody could enter this area. It was a lawless zone. It was damaging the ecology of the Peruvian jungle and the Amazon, which is one of the lungs of the world. If forceful action wasn't taken, deep ecological damage was going to continue. Peru's part of the Amazon alone makes up the fourth largest tropical rainforest in the world. It's a biodiversity hotspot, home to species found nowhere else. But the destruction of this precious resource has been accelerating. What we see, taking a look at the satellite data, is that 2018 is the highest record on year for deforestation in this part of the Amazon. When Luis Fernandez is a former U.S. EPA specialist who now runs the independent Center for Amazonian Scientific Innovation in Peru. A decade ago, Fernandez saw what he calls a perfect storm brewing in Madre de Dios, starting with the construction of the Transoceanic Highway that cut right across this gold-rich land and drew impoverished Peruvians from around the country to previously uninhabited areas. The real tipping point was the economic crisis in 2008, because that is when the price of gold skyrocketed. It sparked a massive gold boom. So you have people flooding the area, going on a brand new road, into an area that is supposed to not be habited. Then you had just weak local governance. Once those factors all came together and overlapped, then you saw like this, this massive explosion inside protected areas where you just never saw it before. With the influx of mining, entire settlements have sprung up, like this one along the highway. It exists only to serve miners and their families. Even under the state of emergency, it remains a dangerous place for authorities and outsiders. Police insisted we film it only with their armed escort. There was a great deal of illicit activity here, from human trafficking to money laundering, corruption, hit men, even mass graves were found here. This was a totally lawless place and it was growing. And so, government forces arrived in Madre de Dios with much fanfare, patrolling populated areas and overflying the jungle canopy to identify remaining illegal mining operations. Sometimes they get tips from local residents, as was the case on this day, leading Colonel Cotito to assemble a small field patrol. It went deep into an area called La Pampa, the ground zero of illegal mining. An hour into the mission, the police officers find a man standing alone next to an abandoned mining site and detain him on suspicion of illegal gold extraction. He will be brought back to the main base to be interviewed by prosecutors. The patrol resumes the hunt and soon finds a squalid mining camp. The men here lead them to their nearby dredging platform. It appears to have been recently used. The troops strap dynamite to the rig and then blow it up.
Back at the camp, the troops set fire to the huts and all of the miners' possessions. They hope to ensure that no one can mine here again. An environmental crackdown of this intensity is new for a country well known for corruption. The previous governor of Madre de Dios had been a gold miner himself and allowed the illegal industry to grow unchecked. But that all changed with the 2018 election of a new governor, Luis Hidalgo. He ran on the promise to end illegal mining and a wave of street crime that had come with it. Hidalgo believes previous attempts were half-hearted. He says this state of emergency will succeed. All of the previous governments have come and conducted interdictions for only 15 days, destroying the machines, expelling the people that were working, and later leaving. And the people would return to those sites. This time, these military bases are the beginning of a program of development and investment that my government has requested. Whether or not Operation Mercury succeeds will also depend in large part on the justice process that follows the interdictions and arrests. There are 80 national prosecutors embedded in the operation, including some specialized in environmental crimes, like Karina Garay. For the crime of illegal mining, we have penalties that can go as high as 12 years, depending on whether the crime was committed in an aggravated manner, like, for example, in a protected natural area. Here in the state of emergency, we can use an expedited process when we see flagrant criminal acts and we don't need more evidence. We can take it to court within 48 hours and within eight days can receive a sentence. That all happens here, in this unassuming but groundbreaking environmental court. The Peruvian government opened it last year. Besides mining, the court also hears cases on other environmental crimes, like illegal logging and animal poaching. Garay scours satellite imagery for signs of new deforestation or emerging gold pits that require immediate action. We look at the forest, we look at the coordinates, we look at the access points, how we can reach them. And we provide this information to those who develop the operational plans, the army, the police, and the navy. Still, she admits, it's a game of cat and mouse. Right now, there are people that have left La Pampa and are invading other areas. Yesterday, we had to respond to a new location based on a complaint we received, and it was indeed full of illegal miners in the middle of operations. We had to destroy everything we found, and this will continue to happen. It will always continue. The financial incentive for gold mining will never go away, says environmentalist Luis Fernandez. Practically speaking, it will be done in places like Madre Dios because of the poverty that exists in many places in Peru. Gold is literally under people's feet. So if you cut down some trees and dig down in the soil, you can make 10 times or 100 times what you would earn as a farmer in a month, in a single day. After five months of the state of emergency, there was some sign of improvement. New research based on satellite imagery shows the rate of deforestation connected to gold mining has dropped more than 90 percent, compared to the same period last year. But even the government of Peru admits military might alone will not be enough to fully end illegal gold mining. In part two of this report, NewsHour Weekend will explore what else can be done to reform production create new economic opportunities, and even restore the damaged environment.